Just a little while before Julius Caesar became emperor, um, or even had an army, um, he had a little bit of an idol called Marius. And Marius was a, uh, this is all in the ancient world, ancient Rome. Uh, Marius was, uh, he would drill his soldiers very hard. Uh, he would make sure, he would, he had, he was notorious for making sure that they were disciplined, that their equipment was taken care of, that their camp was set up right, and that they, they behaved, that they become a real Roman force, solid Roman force. Um, and, you know, that's Marius's basic vibe. Um, he also, he was very much on the side of the average person, like Roman citizen. Um, he, he proposed to the Senate and they passed that, that they allow not just people, that not just people who owned land could be Roman soldiers, but even people who were very poor. Uh, so previously, you had to own land, you know, in the Roman, you know, uh, not necessarily empire, it wasn't an empire at this point, in the Roman Republic and uh, in the lands that it owned or the lands that it claimed as, as its own, you'd had to be, uh, you know, a full a property owning citizen. Marius changed that to where anybody could, uh, anybody who, uh, you know, would commit themselves to the Roman legions could join. Um, so... That's just a basic background of Marius and, you know, a little bit of influence for Caesar because Caesar was also, uh, you know, he led a lot of people into the Roman legions and he forgave a lot of the other Roman legions that went on other people's side. But um, there was this, um, you know, Caesar was later, but there was this ally um, of Marius and Sertorius. his name was... So Sertorius was a really interesting um, Roman general. So right around the time when Sulla was returning back to Rome and Sulla was a big adversary of Marius and this was, uh, you know, somewhat after, um, you know, Marius died, uh, you know, so Sertorius was like, hey, we need to take on Mar, we need to, we need to take on um, Sulla like right now. Sulla, you know, he's out with, with various legions of the Roman Empire, R Roman Republic, and he's fighting these battles and we shouldn't just think that he's going to come back and be peaceful with us because Sulla hated most people in the Senate. But nobody listened to Sertorius. So they sent him off to Spain. And, you know, uh, kind of like a, kind of like, get, get out of here. We're done with you kind of, uh, kind of uh, dismissal. And sent him to Spain to kind of like rule, you know, pretty big part of Spain. But Spain was very, you know, going from Italy to Spain, Spain was very still... Lots of tribes, lots of um, lots of warring factions. It wasn't secure, and it was considered kind of like a border, you know, region at this point. And the Roman Empire become more secure for the Roman Empire. But right now we're in the Ro Roman Republic, so he was sent out there. And when Sulla came back to, you know, Marius died eventually, and then Sulla came back to Rome, started killing basically everybody in the Senate that had sent Sertorius out there. And so Sertorius was like, "Yep." I told y'all to take care of Mar uh, to to not take care of Mar take care of Sola, but you didn't listen, and now you know I got to deal with this. So the only reason that uh, Sertorius Sertorius was saved is because that Senate that eventually got completely butchered sent him off to Spain to like deal with stuff. Um, what did Sertorius do when he was in Spain? So what he did was while he was there, um, instead of raising taxes and trying to get more money from the people of the Iberian Pen Pen Peninsula, but which is Spain, um, he lowered the taxes. And he also, um, he's also tried to make friends and allies. Instead of being like this boot that would crush the locals into the dirt, he decided to be the person who would be like, yeah, I mean, you know, you, I, I want to work with you. Let's work together. Let's not me just be the person who is like destroying you or like taking away things from you. Let's actually work together on this. Um, you know, this whole like Roman province, you know, I'm still going to be in charge of you, but at the same time, uh, I, I, I understand that you, you, uh, you have hard times and you need, you know, the money, a lot of the money that you give to Rome. And he just tried to make friends basically. And this was hugely popular because most Romans, especially, uh, like, if you're in charge of a province, you just kind of like really just, you know, 
take everything from the province that you can and just subdue all the locals. But Sertorius didn't do that. Um, and, uh, you know, he did have, he did have one incident where he dealt, he had to, so basically at this time, the Romans were like, um, this is a little bit before where we were talking about, but the Romans were, were basically quartering in the towns in, in Spain. Uh, and this was a really big thing that the Spaniards did not like, the people of the Iberian Peninsula. They're not one people right now. Um, this is also, it makes me think of, you know, British soldiers quartering, quartering in American houses, and they had just have to put up with it, and that's one of the reasons why we so wanted to split off. One of the reasons, but... Um, so he, uh, he got rid of that later, but before he got rid of that, what happened was that uh, he was in this town with, a, with one of his legions, and um, basically that town called in another town. Uh, they didn't have the guts to do it themselves, called in another town to say, hey, come and kill these Romans. And then they came in the night and they killed a bunch of them. But uh, Sertorius and some survivors remained, and they rallied hid, and then killed the people who had killed the Roman legion. And then Sertorius is like, okay, um, so, you know, there's a whole nother, like, town of, because a lot of the, a lot of the soldiers from the other town had gone back. They only killed the people that were kind of, like, uh, still combatants in the town. He's like, okay, here's what we do. We take up Spani the Spanish clothes, uh, the Iberian Peninsula, like, this particular city's clothes, strip the bodies, put it on ourselves. And then we walk up to their town and, you know, we'll look like them. And when we get there, uh, you know, hopefully we're close enough to where they open the gates and we get in and they don't realize it's us. And then we attack those who have attacked us, who, who have, who have, you know, killed a, a whole bunch of Romans. That's what he did. Very novel for a Roman soldier. Um, so this is kind of a video about how clever Sertorius was and some of the intrigues of, of this time. It's kind of a random video, I know, but so um, what uh, the story that I really wanted to get to about Sertorius was um, when he was waging the guerrilla war against um, the Rome that Sola kind of took over and were sending people at him, uh, sending Roman legions at him, uh, Roman legions fighting Roman legions. Um, so Sertorius, he's like he in favor of a guerrilla campaign, hit and run hit, um, you know, supply lines, um, hit baggage trains, or hit um, anything, that's, anything that's easily hit from the back, or you ambush Roman uh, maniples or Ro Roman legions, maniples or pieces of Roman legion. You hit those, destroy those where you can, ambush, but never try to win a set-piece battle. So... You know, all this time, Sertorius, he was actually making a whole bunch of allies with the with the Spaniards, the people of the Iberian Peninsula, because, you know, he showed them that he could kill them if they attacked him. But he was also extremely lenient after that with taxes, and he didn't, he didn't you know, quarter his troops in towns anymore. He rewarded them for working with him and, you know, punished the ones that weren't working with him. So, um... You know, it was, a, it was like a carrot stick kind of thing. It's very intelligent. So, like, no matter what kind of what kind of career you have or what kind of, if you have any management management position, you always want to have a carrot stick. Like, hey, this is what you get if you do good. Even if it's something just like a, hey, good job. If you do bad, then, you know, we're going to look down upon you. Or, <laughs> it's not always looking down upon, but, or, you know, you're not going to get this many hours or responsibilities, things like that. So, that's a really good management tactic. So, now we're getting to uh, the story that I actually want to talk about. Um, I'm just, I just gave you that background to kind of give you a background for the story, and honestly, the background's way longer than uh, the actual story I have to tell you. So, the uh, his his guerrilla groups. He also had you know thousands of you know Roman Roman legion soldiers, but you know uh, he was get he was having trouble controlling like he was having trouble getting his uh, Iberian Peninsula you know various clans and tribes in Spain to work with him to kind of not go one-on-one -on -one with the Romans. Because a lot of them are just like, hey, let's fight a set-piece battle. Let's go straight on in. Also, the, there's a little bit of lesson uh, for life in that, just for, for anybody, is uh, stand back, keep account, 
you don't have to approach everything head on. Always think before you do something. It's very basic, but it's a good idea. <clears throat> so, um, Sartorius, um, you know, he's like, okay, if, if y'all want to go attack the Roman legions that are against us under Pompey, you know, go ahead. Um, I'm not going to stop you. And they go, suffer big defeat, come back. They're, they're sullen, you know, they're sulky. Not happy with, um, you know, the situation. Turns out Sertorius was right. So, um, Sertorius gives them an example of his idea of warfare and guerrilla warfare. Uh, guerrilla comes from the Spanish word guerrilla, which means small, um, small war, small battle. Basically fight all these small battles and not do like big battles. So that a lot of people think that's, you know, guerrilla warfare means like guerrilla, but it actually means like small war. Like you do all these little small little things, all these ambushes, all these, you know, attacking little supply lines, surrounding the enemy, attacking little spaces, not confronting them like head on. Uh, small war. Small wars are better than, or small battles is better than uh, big wars. Um, small battles are better than big battles. Um, if you're a smaller force and you don't have as many resources, you don't want to attack something head on. You want to eat at it. Um, pick at the ends. So, um, Sertorius, to explain what he's talking about, he brings a really strong dude. Really weak dude. Like, big, strong guy. Small, scrawny guy. Then he brings, he gives a really scrawny horse to the big guy. And a really big muscular horse to the small guy. And he tells, and he, you know, all his, you know, multiple of his, you know, officers are watching and people that lead the clans of the uh, various tribes of the Iberian Peninsula. But um, he tells the, um, this is a little bit animal abuse, by the way, but. I mean, in the ancient world, this is probably the least of their crimes on average. Like, it is, there's a whole lot of stuff. Anyway, so he tells the big dude to try to pull out the hairs of the scrawny horse by grabbing all of the hairs and trying to pull them out. He tells the little dude with the big horse to just pluck one tail hair at a time. And for a long time, for as long as it takes the scrawny guy with the big horse to pull out the individual hairs. The big guy with the scrawny horse trying to pull on the tail, trying to pull out all the hairs. But the scrawny guy, without the horse really even noticing, he just slowly and carefully pulls out one hair at a time. And, I mean, we can all guess how this ends. The big guy with the scrawny horse has not pulled out any hairs. No matter if he can control the animal, which he can, because he's strong, but he's trying to take all the hairs out at once. So that's what he's ordered to do. And then the scrawny guy eventually pulls out every single hair off the off of his, you know, strong horse's tail. And he accomplishes the feat. And Sertorius tells him, he says, um, he says, if we try to pull out everything at once if we have to if we try to tackle everything at once we're not going to actually get anywhere we're not going to accomplish any of our aims because not only are we smaller in size but ultimately it is unnecessary to try to accomplish everything at once but if we accomplish one little thing at a time then eventually we'll get to a place where all those little things add up to the, what we're trying to accomplish, our grander mission. And uh, a free, you know, a free people for you, you, and you, and you, and he looks at all the clans. Um, and they get the message. But I think that this can also, so every military lesson can transfer into, like, a lesson for us that we can use in our lives. So... If we can't, if we can't accomplish something quickly, or if we try to do so much at once and then we just give up, that happens so much to us as human beings. 
And it's why plans are really important. Maybe like, you know, save this amount of money day after day. You know, even something like push-ups. So I've recently discovered that, you know, I, I was really, it really haunted me after I ripped one of my ab muscles and it hurt really bad and I could feel it in two different parts. But I started doing push-ups about two weeks ago. And I started doing more and more push-ups every day. I started feeling better and better and better. And I wasn't trying to go into my gym and do a whole bunch of stuff, but just doing, you know, three sets of eight push-ups. And then I went to, you know, three sets of nine, three sets of 10, but very slowly over two weeks. And my muscle memory started to come back and, you know, I'm starting to get those muscles again. But I chose not to throw a whole challenge of working out every day at myself, but slowly build up to both the courage because I hurt myself and I'm a little bit afraid of it and the uh the ability the strength itself um just doing push-ups every day reaching that putting little goals on myself and then accomplishing those day after day after day and this is where the philosophy of really great men kind of come into it is great you know great people who accomplish a lot of stuff they're very good at accomplishing what they want to accomplish there's two things that they have and that they do focus and speed you have to be able to focus on going towards your goal, you know, choosing what your goal is, then then following it day after day after day after day and focusing on it, figuring out new ways you can do it, you know, learning more so that, you know, what do I need to learn in order to accomplish this? What do I need to do in order to get what I want in life? What do I want in life? Do I want to be, you know, in, in a happy relationship? Do I want a bunch of friends? Do I want to... Do I want to, you know, kind of get a promotion? What do I want in life? And, you know, maybe it's just the ability to, you know, be mobile and be able to drive around, you know, working towards, you know, getting documents for that you need for a car, then getting a car, you know, making payments. But everything is incremental. You're not going to get it all at once. And you need to be able to remain confident in yourself based on, you know, a defined mission that you make for yourself and remain confident in it. Don't be downtrodden. Keep on pulling one hair after hair after hair out of that tail of the horse. And then the other, you know, it's focus and speed. So, um, if there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do in a day and you feel you can do it, and this seems contradictory because I just told you, you know, do a little bit at a time, but Figure out how much you can do, like with your willpower, because we all have willpower points. And the focus uh, is on the goal. If you're just, you know, just choose to do a little bit of a day, a little bit a day if you can. And that can be your responsibility. But there's also the idea of speed. If you figure out you can do more to go towards your goal, uh, you can, you know, pull out hairs more quickly, not necessarily grouping them, but pulling them out more quickly out of the horse's tail then do that. But never allow yourself to defeat yourself by assuming that you can be faster than you than you are. Try to use both your leisure time and your work time to figure out new ways to accomplish your goals. And accept that you're only going to get achieve your goals um, quicker if you yourself are quick. If you try to accomplish these things more quickly, but don't defeat yourself by biting off more than you can chew. So it's a balance. And this balance is very important. And that's why, you know, outside the Oracle at Delphi, um, there was something etched in stone that says, um, know thyself. You need to understand yourself before you before you, the most important thing is understanding yourself. You have to truly understand yourself. We have this tendency to look at everything around us, judge that, judge other people, or just think of how awful the world is, how great the world is. But what is your inner world like? What is your nature? Are you traveling in circles and thoughts? How often do you think this or that thought? Do you come back to this thought again and again? 
How many years have you been following this cycle of thoughts? Read. Think of the thoughts that you keep on coming back to, good or bad. Just circle, circle, circle. You have to think about how you can break that circle because thoughts, thinking is a habit. If you have certain habits of ways that you think or things that you think about specific things, then those are the things that will either hold you back or propel you forward. But I mean, think about it. What are, what, are the, what are some of the thoughts that you return to every week, every day? Is there a way for you to think about other things to break this cycle? Is the cycle of thoughts, probably most of the time it's negative, but are these cycles of thoughts helping you? Or is it just, is it just a pain Karis wheel? Step back, try to think about your thinking. And when you find yourself thinking a negative thought that just continues a circle of negative thoughts, stop yourself. Start thinking about something else. Perhaps start learning about something else. Because when we learn from books, audiobooks, podcasts, or by speaking to others about various subjects, then the wheel, the nature of it is changed. So change your wheel. At any rate, this has been kind of a rambly video. I hope you like this video at least a little bit. If you like this at all, hit that thumbs up down there. It really helps out the channel. You can share this YouTube video wherever you want, if you so desire, uh, as long as you give me credit. And uh, feel free to contact me on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash hunter.salazar. H-U-N-T-E-R period S-A-L-A-Z-A-R. At any rate, thank you very much for watching and I hope all of you have a wonderful day.